Well, you mentioned the traveling and, and going through all these experiences, uh, which you did. Yeah. Was this something, maybe I'm, I'm going too far, but was this something you needed from, from to separate yourself from the world of, of showbiz and, and... Oh, yeah. Um, the world of showbiz for me... The music industry... Is uh, it's uh, not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you a, were so young when you yeah, started. Yeah, it's a funny old thing, you know, because every now and then you go in, like I'll dip into it, mm -hmm. and then I'll dip out so quickly because it's not my preferred way of living. Right. It's okay to do it. It doesn't mean that it's awful and that it's the worst thing in the world, you know. How dare they walk down the red carpets mm -hmm. with their sunglasses on, you know, like it's not like that. I don't mm -hmm. feel angry at it. I just... Um, I just think it's a bit, it's not really my choice or my style of living. Like, I like grass and trees and dogs and cats and people. And um, I like to wake up and be somewhere different. And I think um, this world of showbiz, it involves a lot of fake eyelashes mm -hmm. and, um, you know, hair extensions and high heels and lip gloss. And I'm happy to do that. I'm a girl, I like dressing up sometimes, right. it's really fun. But I don't like dressing up every day. It's a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. So it's just, ugh. And, and the other part of it, and I think there's a song about this on the record, where, where it can also impede on, on your artistic creativity. Yeah, I think if you do the same thing every day, regardless of what that might be, mm -hmm. yes, it will impede on your creativity for sure. Because you have to write about something, and if you're living the same life every day, if you live in a hotel, what are you going to yeah. write about? Right. The minibar? You have to live. Live. Go somewhere. Meet someone. Talk to people when you're on the tube. Talk. Smile. Laugh. Cry. Punch someone. Do whatever the hell you're going to do. Just live. Mm. Don't punch anyone. But, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But you, you, so you went, uh, I think you traveled through Europe while writing this record. Mm. So part of it, yeah. But, but at least part of it. Yeah. So was the sound already there? The, the, did you already have a sound for it in mind? Yeah, I guess when I started writing this record, I didn't realize that the songs were going to become part of a record. Mm. I was, um, I was traveling um, in the van with my boyfriend of the time. This is a long time ago now. Um, and I just, I don't think I was making enough music. I was just mm. in the van with my dogs and moving around. And I did get a bit bored. And then I got a bit moody because <laughs> I was bored. I know it's terrible, but I did. And um, I was walking along and he says to me, he goes, for God's sake, just go and write some songs or something. Go make some music, he said. And I just thought, oh. And then I stopped to think, oh my God, that's why I'm moody. Because I couldn't figure it out myself. And he saw that in me before I saw it in me. So then I thought, you know what, you're right. I do, I just, I want to go make something. What it's was, the, what, sorry, what was the first thing you wrote when he said that? The first thing I wrote? Yeah, the first song. Oh, God. I mean, so then I called Jonathan and then he came over and then we went to Senac and wrote... I think the first thing I wrote was a song called Show Me. And that's not part of the record. I did record it, mm. but I couldn't. I just couldn't. I just couldn't finish. I, I mean, I did it, but I couldn't. Well, in what I couldn't way? hold my shit together. Okay. I couldn't what? do it. What, was it too personal or too? Yeah, it was just too reminiscent. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to. I can't. <laughs> so I've not included it. Okay. But maybe one day I'll be able to. And so then when I can, people will hear it. Because I really love that song. But. These other songs that are, are on the record, then, do they take you back to all these moments and, yeah. uh, and experiences? They do. If, if you had to pick one, and, and anyone, which one kind of sticks out for you? Oh, God. I mean... It's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. You know, they all take me back to how I was feeling mm -hmm. um, at the time. Sometimes too much. Okay. Um, Love Me certainly does. You know, um, I was in the studio with Damien Marley for that one. Mm. And I just remember that we were all in a circle and he was on his little machine thing with the square and he making the beats. <laughs> I don't right. know what he was doing. He was doing something. <laughs> and you know, Courtney was on the drums and you know, Shia was on the bass and it was just a nice, 
It was a nice time. I enjoyed that. I loved it. I loved the kind of the feeling. And then I finished writing that song because I had the hook. And we had loads of different little hooks everywhere. I took it home and I was driving my mum actually to the hospital. And on the way, my mum and I finished the verses together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, that was kind of cool because I have two different feelings about that. So, so she gets a small writing yeah. credit. Oh, yeah, my mum's really good at writing. She's very clever. OK, finally then, um, you mentioned Damien Marley uh, having an influence on the record. Was it important to have somebody like Damien Marley on there to, to give it a little bit more weight, in a sense? In a way, you know, I think some people would have thought that, yeah. So, you know, there were certain conversations had while making this record mm. that bothers me. Okay. about that so like I kind of I met Damien mm. and I'm inspired by Damien and the truth is he he gave me confidence to go forward with mm. this style of music in in the way that I have um, I've made a deliberate decision to not make it a straight reggae record right. that's like very conscious and not an accident because I don't want to piss anyone off Um, I just want to enjoy music and have it become part of whatever it is I'm doing. Um, but there were conversations while making this record with certain people that were like, you know, you need to get some like reggae heavyweights because otherwise people are going to be like they won't take it seriously. I will never, I will never choose to work with somebody musically based on what they've done in the past to give my piece of music credibility. Right. I, I really hate that. It kind of just that is the wrong reason to choose mm. a, um, a musician or a collaborator. It's just the wrong reason. It should always be a musical decision. Would they add to this piece of music? And you know, why, why do you need that instrument on this album or on, or on this track? Mm. You know, what's it going to bring? It's a musical question. So yeah, I, I struggle with that because Of course, people are like, well, you're making a soul record. That means you've got to have James Brown's horns. Mm. No, it doesn't. But were you anxious then? Because you said it, he gave you confidence. So, so yeah, he did. Yeah. Were you anxious about yeah. how it would go? Totally. I do a lot of things in this life that I'm anxious about. <laughs> but yeah, I was. You know, when I, when I first started making the record, so I'd been working with Jonathan mm. in his... Um, studio in London and he's really into reggae like deeply loving reggae and a lot of his mates are great reggae musicians and um, You know they live in that world quite solidly. Right. I clearly don't live in any world solidly So I'm kind of dipping in and out and you know, but they they take it very seriously, you know mm. um, I not so much so, you know, I'm just writing and it's all like oh, you know We just have to have the song and it sounds nice and the end so I, I go and I play them to Damien and then he, he kind of, he was like, you got to make a reggae record, Joss. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not making a reggae record. You know, because I, I was, I am nervous about stepping on people's toes, mm. but I'm not nervous about trying different things and, and involving different styles because everyone has the right to do that. But I, I don't think... I can go and make a straight reggae record because I don't have it in me. Mm. I don't speak Patois, right. you know, I don't have that. And it does make me feel, God, I don't want to... The last thing that I want to do with my music is piss someone off. Mm. I just want them to feel good. And if they don't feel good, please just turn it off and then wait for the next one because maybe that one will make you feel good. You know, skip as much as you like, but I just, I just want it to be a positive thing, mm. you know? Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Cool. All right.